Good morning, everybody. Um, it's really always a pleasure to come to Restoration Weekend and see so many great people uh, to enjoy your company and realize that none of us are, are alone, that we're part of something great and big and, and uh, powerful. And uh, every time I come out of here, I feel energized. And, and so thank you all for coming and energizing me and making me feel like, okay, Barack Obama doesn't have my back, but you do. <laughs> so. So, um, all right, uh, the genocidal axis. Um, so I, I, um, I just want to look at it from, I, I was laughing with Eric, and I, at, uh, I'm sorry, Mike, at the uh, title of our panel. I said, the genocidal axis, so is this like a pro-con thing? Like, you know, am I supposed to take the pro side, and Robert's going to be against it, or, you know, how exactly am I supposed to be looking at this? And so... Um, but really, I, uh, I don't feel so much about talking specifically about the ideology of, uh, of Islamic uh, anti-Semites or genocidal Jew haters or European or leftist uh, people who, who want to uh, uh, destroy Jewish power and, and make us all uh, uh, needy and, and begging for our very lives with all of these wonderful uh, commissars of the left. Um, what I wanted to is to try to talk about what it is that all of the enemies of the Jewish people basically throughout the ages share. Because one thing about the genocidal axis is that it's not new. It's been here throughout time. And the members of the genocidal axis may change their accents, they may change uh, the, the books that they read, they may change a million different things, uh, the continents they live in. But one thing that they share across time is that over and over and over again, the target of their genocidal bloodlust are the Jews. Yeah. Always. Always. I remember um, uh, Bencio Netanyahu, uh, uh, Bibi's father, who, who passed away at the age of 102 uh, about a year ago, um, he and I developed a, a friendship over the years. and. Um, Repeatedly, because he was 102 when he died, uh, he said the same things over and over again. And uh, um, one of the things that he he told me over and over and over again, it, with the same impassioned anger, was uh, that he could not stand the fixation on the Holocaust as some sort of singular moment in global history because there has been a Holocaust of Jewry in every generation throughout the ages. That the same passions that inflamed the Germans and then spread out throughout Europe with this bloodlust of wanting to kill children like mine um, was due was due to a passion that moves through the ages, that there was nothing unique about that desire to shoot lead into Jewish babies. Nothing unique about it. It has been going on since the time of the Greeks and the ancient Egyptians and Pharaoh. Just read the Bible. What is he talking about? He wants to annihilate a people. It's not he wants to enslave them. He wants them gone. Out. What's the difference between Pharaoh and Hitler? Technology? That's it. Now, we have to understand what is that unifying force between Pharaoh and Ahmadinejad and Rouhani and yes, the international left that is the handmaiden of these monsters of the Islamic world without which they could never, ever march even one step forward. It is the uh, rejection, rejection of reason. Benedict XVI talked about it in his speech in Regensburg that caused rioting throughout the Islamic world and the murder of nuns and uh, other unfortunate uh, non-jihadists that happened to find their way in the path of, uh, of all of the angry Muslims who were angry because the Pope had talked about Islam's rejection of reason. Which is, of course, hilarious, but not if you were in their path. Um, and, and what is it, really, about reason 
and about choice and about the notion of moral choice and moral empowerment of individuals that stands at the root of a genocidal bloodlust against the Jews. And the answer is that from time immemorial, Judaism has been based from the time that God first spoke to Abraham in Iraq and told him to leave his father's home after Abraham took down the idols in his father's store, broke them. Get thee to the land that I have promised to you and your children. What was it about Abraham that God embraced at that time and about the Jews and every single generation since then that drives people bananas? It is the idea of good and evil. It is the idea that we as human beings have the responsibility to de make a discernment between good and evil and to choose good in our lifetimes. And it is to look to the forefathers of the Jewish people, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are our forefathers, who we define ourselves as being their children in all of our prayers from time immemorial until today, the choices that they made, the God that they defined and believed in, that has defined us as a holy people, as a chosen people, is because we accept not divine salvation, but the notion of a life of hard choices, of constantly making that decision and loyalty to a notion that it is our responsibility to do so. And that drives people to genocidal bloodlust because at the root, at the root of this bloodlust is a rejection of reason. It's a rejection of individualism. It's a rejection of responsibility. It's a rejection of the notion that we have to be good because that makes our lives a struggle. That makes our lives difficult. And. You know, I, I uh, was, uh, uh, shared a podium several years ago. I had the honor of sharing a podium with uh, Robert Oman, the Israeli uh, Nobel uh, Economics Laureate. And he described the passage in the Bible of Jacob struggling with the angel of God. And what Jacob did, he fought with him all night long. And he injured him, and the angel wanted to go away. And Jacob said, you can't go until you bless me. Not letting you go, you bless me. You embrace me. You embrace my choice. You reject your choice. And until you do that, you can't go. I don't care how you're bloody, you're this. I'm holding on to you. Bless me. And he did. <laughs> and he blessed him. And the idea was that he was forcing this angel as well to make that decision. People don't want to. Now what was it? that made the United States the only country to date that didn't have the same genocidal Jew hatred at the root of its identity that we saw in country after country in Europe, that we see in the Arab world. It was that the United States, its forefathers, had this idea that was based on the Torah of a rule of law of limited government, of the responsibility of individuals to make that decision between good and evil, and to choose good and to have the liberty from government to be able to make that choice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, the whole concept of the modern state is based upon the philosophical works of men like John Selden, and John Locke, Thomas Hobbes, who were Hebrew scholars, who based their whole concept of a modern state that these men put together on the rule of law, on divine law, meaning that man could not be a totalitarian because we are not God, meaning that there was no way you could not question authority because men are imperfect. And therefore, if you have a man who is your ruler, he cannot be perfect because he's not God. And that was the whole concept of limited government. The whole concept of a modern state was based on the Hebrew Bible. And it was transported from the British Enlightenment to the New World through the American forefathers, founding fathers. 
And it was the basis of all the institutions of checks and balances and limited government in this country and of communalism as opposed to a central church, a hierarchical church. And what do we see today? Why is it that we see more and more and more Jew hatred and attacks on Jews in U.S. universities, in uh, political circles on the left? Because the left in the United States is introducing an ideology that is fundamentally un-American, that is based upon a totalitarian idea of a governing power that is absolute, that knows better, better than an individual what's good for him or her, and if you know better than I do what's good for me, what's good for my children, then you're an absolute power, right? And if you are an absolute power, you have to reject Jews. Because absolute powers must reject Jews. Who understand that there's no such thing except God, and by the way, you're not him. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, I don't know if the fact that Eric is like tearing little pieces of paper and kind of sending those vibes, but I'm just going to, um, I notice I have peripheral vision, I do. I'm a mom. I could probably see you back there if you were doing something, but um, <clears throat> to conclude, we are faced with this wave because the strength of people in this room, unfortunately outside this room, seems to be waning. And the wave that is rising throughout the world is a wave of hatred, of bloodlust, of totalitarianism. And again, this is familiar. This is known. We understand what we're dealing with. The new thing in this generation is that we see the Americans confused for the first time about what side they're supposed to be on. We see that there is a question about is Israel evil for standing up, for existing, for being different from all of its unesthetic, misogynistic, totalitarian neighbors? Are we bad? for being loyal to everything that we've stood for for 4,000 years? How can you question that? Because Americans are beginning to question what it means to be an American or not even understand it. And that is why, at the end of the day, fundamentally, the issues of health care and of welfare in general that are being discussed in the, demo, in the democratic foras and panels that have been going on here and throughout this country are integrally linked with the panels about foreign policy in Iran and the Palestinians that we hear in this uh, weekend and, uh, and throughout, at least in conservative circles today. Because it's all about a question of what does it mean to be a human being. And if you come down on that question, understanding that to be a human being means to be a moral agent, not an object, then you're with the Jews. Yeah. And you're opposing totalitarianism, and you're opposing hatred, and you're opposing genocide. And if you come down on that question with, I want somebody else to tell me what to do, I don't know. I too weak, I'm too lazy, I'm too uneducated, I'm too ignorant to recognize the meaning of freedom, then you're swayed. You don't care, or you can run around saying liberate Palestine. And that's the question. So I wanted to hawk my book that's coming out on March 4th, just because Mike mentioned that I should always do that because we want it to be a bestseller. But it basically aligns with a lot of the things that I've been talking about this morning and that I talk about every day. It's called The Israeli Solution, and it's directed towards the American audience, and it basically comes out and says, you want a foreign policy that's coherent, that's going to advance American values and interests, stand with Israel. You want to figure out how to ensure that America is safe, stand with Israel. So thank you very much. Have a great day.